I love these pieces of wood because they remind me of whales. You see their eyes there. I'm going to find some more pieces. But they look like the whales of the forest. Humpback right. whales. Let's see if we can focus. Focus? Okay. Going back into the forest where we're staying. This is a different part of the forest and we're going to go hunting for some humpback log whales. Okay. So as soon as I find one, I'll let you know. There's a whale just going back in the water. Whoosh. Hi everyone, I'm just showing you how I measured the paper for my book. Always make sure you have the paper um, the right size. The paper I'm using here is watercolour paper. Watercolours isn't something that I do on a regular basis but for the whale, I felt that it gave it a really nice soft edge because I am actually making the whale look, well I'm inspired from a piece of wood. So I want to give him that same kind of ethereal quality that the wood has. I'm just using um, mediocre watercolours, reeds, tube, not pan. And... Um, I'm just drawing them out with a normal pencil, <clears throat> as you can see. <laughs> I do have a picture that I found on the internet for inspiration. Now, what I'm doing is I've not pre-soaked the paper, I'm soaking the paper now because I want control over where the colours go because I'm going to use the dark of the body first rather than the light of the underbelly. Now, I'm mixing up a I think it's Payne's grey and brown. I can't remember because I just picked them out of the, the box really. What I'm looking at is I want to try and replicate the texture of the trunk of the tree with the moss and the darkness and the weatheredness rather than emulate a humpback whale. I'm not looking, I've used the characteristics of a humpback whale, but the coloration and texture is I want to combine the two. And by putting the water on first in the areas that I need to get it wet is brilliant because it gives me much more control than if I was to soak the paper first. By soaking the paper first, um, that gives you a more of a spread of paint, and that's not what I'm looking for. I am now applying green on top. While it's still wet, you can apply as many colours as you like. And this is the green of the moss on top of the trunks that I am trying to emulate now on top. Oh, don't worry about painting over any of your lines. That's not important. I'm now adding sea salt to create texture as it dries. It won't be a very strong texture, just very, very subtle. We come up against another one of the whales. You see his eye. You just imagine him swimming past you. I'll show you this branch. It goes all the way down and then it supports itself. Those two little legs there and there and then goes all the way down and down and down and down and down and finally comes back up there isn't that amazing amazing there he is and all the way down Ooh, the forest alconda <laughs> okay now I'm back <laughs> I am now doing the underside of the whale, again, using just the water where I want the paint to go. I'm using blue this time because I want to think about the reality of the whale, of, about where he does come from, from the oceans. Um, what I didn't talk about a little bit earlier was the background. What I've actually done is I've just used collage fodder. I've just looked in some magazines and found some forests, 
seen some, some trees and what I've done is I've used the different elements not elements different seasons <laughs> because um, these mysterious humpback whales you can find it any time of the year in your forest and um, I really enjoyed it because I went to the new forest and there was loads and loads and loads of them and this is a journal page that I wanted to do for years because the um, sometimes when I stumble across these fallen logs the bits where the branches have fallen off really do remind me of humpback whales and when the weather is, is eaten into the trunk it leaves those wonderful wonderful um, lines or when the lichens on the top of the, of the moss reminds me of the humpback whale again. So what I've done is I'm now just rubbing off the salt and again when you do apply your paint remember you are doing a 3D object do try and make your paintbrush flow with the shape of the animal um, just to let you know that, that this is a dry baby wipe I'm using Okay, <laughs> not a wet one, though I don't think the, the wet one would just make it all muddy and smudgy. Now I have tried to use alcohol on there to try and make it pop a bit more, but um, it didn't seem to work, so I abandoned the idea. Also, the areas that you want to leave white, instead of applying white, well, there is no white watercolour as such, leave the areas of the paint of the paper white and that will give you your white okay now what you can do when you are using watercolor you can apply acrylic on top I'm using a Posca pen here and I've used an also an ordinary pencil and um, you can apply it over the top of the watercolor what you can't do is you can't apply watercolour on top of acrylic or oil. There is a, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. There is a kind of fluid that you can put on top of the watercolour of acrylic that will make the paper more absorbent so you can apply watercolour on top. I will try and find it and put it in the links below. Um, so now I am just using my Posca pens, I'm using my gel, my gel pens and my Uniball pen here just to bring him to life. You will notice that when the watercolour dries it might not be to your liking, it might be a little bit light so you can go over it because what watercolour does is it stains the paper so that you can reapply more depth of colour but I'm quite happy to have this quite light because I want it to fit in and uh, I, don't, I don't want it to be too um, textured or too graphic because it, uh, it will then sort of get lost in the background so don't be don't be afraid to use any kind of background if, if you're in a rush and I am in a I'm really busy at the moment um, so I thought I would just do a quick a quick sketch and show you that you don't just have to use acrylic you can actually use watercolor on a collage background and it's a great way of giving a, a subtle background or a textured background um, adding detail quickly rather than using acrylics which is much more painstaking um, he's now looking at me as I come alive he's giving me a, a little wink to say I oh, know you found me in the wood <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm really sorry there's any background noise, but I have my back door open and um, the birds have been playing in the garden. It's quite a lovely day. Um, as, as I say, this was inspired by the New Forest. I've just come back from the New Forest. I am going again at the weekend. Um, we have a bank holiday here and I'm going back, but I don't think I'll be filming. But I will be filming two um, loose leaf pictures um, from the um, new forest. Hopefully one will be a pig with a ring through his nose and the other one will be a donkey. I won't do a pony because I'm doing a couple of other horse pictures 
in the future and I've just done um, Harry's prints. So as you can see my uniball goes over this really really well and I can see the lines of the pencil quite well through the watercolour. It, it is amazing for that because of the, of the layering of the watercolour. You can do it as thick or as thin as you like and please don't be afraid of watercolour. People make it sound so difficult but it, it really isn't difficult at all. It's just fun but it is a little bit hard to control but nothing that you couldn't Master with a few goes. Don't be frightened of watercolour. There's a narrow whale just come up to see us. So, again, I'm using the Posca pen to do the highlights of his eyes. I have a little bit of trouble with it because of the texture of the um, sole. Though you brush the sole off, it doesn't always come off. Um, but as you can see now that the paint is drying, it does take a while for the paint to dry. You can see the subtleness of why people use watercolour because of the different shades, the mottling. There is something about watercolour that you cannot get with any other paint. That softness, that merging of colour, it is very, very unique than any other pen. I'm still adding the highlights with the Posca pen. It goes on it really, really, really well. I'm really pleased with that effect. Um, I did have great fun in the New Forest finding and searching these out I hope when you see the sorry about that um, I did shade it with a pencil but I'm not quite sure what I've done with that bit I can't seem to find it anywhere I've edited this when I've unloaded it loaded it up I don't think I could have put my camera on okay I'm now cutting him out um, I did as I was saying before I interrupted myself I did have great fun in the forest. I hope you enjoy the little clips of me climbing on the wood and me searching them out. It's just a bit of fun. I had a bit of time on my own and it was something that I've done a lot as I've gone through a lot of woods is come across these unusual little stumps and that's what they remind me of. So please, when you're out in the woods, please, please, please just go and see what creatures you can find from this, from the trees, from the flowers from the landscape. I can say for me it's these fallen logs have always reminded me of humpback whales and this holiday because I had my heart daughter with me Brina I was a child again going through the wood exploring finding them and I hope too that you enjoy the video that goes with them. Um, I'm going to use Yes Paste to stick this down. Um, there isn't a much key to the actual background because it is magazines. So I'm going to use Yes Paste. I'm going to show, can you see him a little bit more in detail here? Not very clearly, sorry about that. Um, I'm, well, I use Yes Paste. Um, also, another little tip is fold it up first. This, this is a bit difficult because it is watercolour paper. It's going to be one of the most difficult pages that I have to stick down. And the magazines do not have a key. So I'm just using a dry wet wipe to push him into the crease of the book. And I think at a later date, probably this evening, I will probably stick something on top of it to try and get him to stay in place. That is the only trouble. And my book is getting really, really I think what I might do is I might break the spine and um, re-stick it together. Um, but I, I just wanted you to see that you could use watercolour with a collage underneath. And I, I hope that the whale has picked up some of the colours of the forest that I'm showing you. I'm just adding some bubbles now. Not that there are any bubbles in the forest. But saying that... Me and Eddie took the dogs for a walk the other day because you know we live in the forest. And we were going down a track and Eddie stopped me and said, Oh my God, look, B. And there was, I believe 
me, I kid you not, a single bubble floating in the sky towards us. Now, we couldn't find anybody blowing bubbles, but where this bubble had come from, we have no idea. So, I'm incorporating that little memory inside this journal page too. The little bubble as me and Eddie went for a walk. And I'm just using a ordinary gel pen. And there's Mossy, and there's the different seasons, so that you can find these humpback whales in any season that you want. Okay, it will just be different colours. Please let me know if you do find any. And here's Mossy in his background, winking at you, hoping that you may find your own Mossy in the wood. So thank you very much for watching. Take care, love from me and Mossy. See you This soon. is a really, really old whale. Here's barnacles. There's a really, really old one.